this USB Wi-Fi adapter costs $50. This one costs three. What's the difference and what's the catch? Let's go ahead and find out. Let's see a quick comparison between the two. So this one is by TP-Link and is Wi-Fi 6, rated for AX3000. And it says here on the side that it can do up to 2042 Mbps on 5 gigahertz and 574 on 2.4 gigahertz. So I believe that's probably the download speed. This one is also called the Archer TX50UH. As you can see there, it's quite a nice package as I expect for $50. Um, it comes with a nice USB dock and it has this extendable antenna as well. Apparently it's high gain, so we'll see what it's like. And it comes with a three year warranty, which is pretty cool. Let's have a look at the cheap one. So this one, unfortunately, is on USB 2.0 and it only does 2.4 gigahertz. So it won't be that quick, but for $3, we'll see how well it does. Um, it should be pretty decent just for basic stuff. And it says here it does up to 300 Mbps down and 300 Mbps up. So it's actually not too bad, but I'm not sure how the latency is gonna be. But I like that it has a detachable antenna, so you can put a larger one if you need. Um, this one as well is only dual band, so it's not three band, but I didn't need to be three band. So let's go ahead and uh, see the unboxings of these. So the $3 one is pretty simple. Just open it up and okay, it comes with a CD inside and just the USB and the antenna. So I can, I don't know if I have my larger antenna on me, but if I do, then I can put it on. This is a no name brand as well, of course, because it's so cheap. So simple enough, you just get the USB adapter and then just cool. There is a little break in it. You guys can see that there. So <laughs> it's only $3, but it, it did break. So uh, yeah, we'll put that to the side. Now let's have a look at the $50 one. So the AX3000 and comes nicely wrapped from TP Link. And let's have a look. So we'll open it up. Cool. And we get a warranty card, Australia, New Zealand warranty card. Then we have the USB receiver. And it's kind of, it's like dark gray and light gray. So let's see. Okay, awesome. So. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but you can see when it's antennas attach um, onto the board. Do be careful when you're opening it up. It's a little bit fragile, but when it's up, it's fine. It's quite a nice click. Cool. And then, of course, it comes with the USB dock. Now, it's not, I don't think it's anything fancy. I think it's literally just a USB extender and you just chuck it in like that. And that's pretty much it for the unboxing. I don't think there should be anything else in here. A quick tip for the TP-Link Archer, if you're having problems, is to follow these instructions on a Reddit thread I found. It should help out for Wi-Fi dropouts or other issues. You probably need to manually uninstall the generic drivers that Windows puts for the Wi-Fi card and install the correct drivers from the TP-Link website. Of course, don't just uninstall the drivers until you have downloaded the correct ones, otherwise you won't have any access to the internet. The reason I need a Wi-Fi card is because the the Wi-Fi signal is going through about one room wall and a thick kitchen wall and cabinet, so that's why there's a problem with my signal strength. To improve the Wi-Fi strength or signal strength, it's best to point it towards where the signal is coming from, so your router, and get as close as you can with minimal obstructions like walls. I also need to find the best place for the Wi-Fi cards to physically put them. I tried a few locations, 
but I found that this position on top of my PC is most stable for the $50 card. Now the $3 Wi-Fi card performs worse at the back of the PC, so to give it its best shot, I'll be using the USB extender on top of the PC as well for a fair chance. A quick tip as well is checking Wi-Fi signal strength is pretty difficult, but if you use a software like Vistumbler, which I use, it can be really easy to check the signal strength of your Wi-Fi. Now let's do a ping test or latency test to the router, which will show us any problems between the Wi-Fi card and the router, and a speed test for the internet speed to the same server. This will just be a normal speed test on Ookla. I'll be using a 3 run average for both of these tests. Also to note, my Wi-Fi router is on a gigabit fiber connection. For the first $50 TP-Link Archer, over the 3 average ping tests we get 0.66 for average ping, which honestly is quite impressive. So the lower the number for the average ping test between the Wi-Fi card and the router, the better it is. We are literally below 1 ms, so that is really quick. The higher the ms number, the longer it takes to send information between your computer and the router. Now for the average speed test, we got for download speed 232 mbps for download, and for upload we got 220. 12 mbps for the upload speed. This is quite impressive considering how bad the Wi-Fi is in this room usually. Now the $3 Wi-Fi card. Over the three average ping tests we got an average of 105 ms for average ping which is pretty bad and through the tests it was actually quite unstable. For the first one I got 24, for the second one I got 246 and for the third one I got 44. I retested it again to make sure we got a similar result and unfortunately we did. Now for the three average speed tests, for the download speed we got 16 mbps for download and 22 mbps for upload. Quite a pro performance for the cheap Wi-Fi antenna. Having a quick test in a basic game called League of Legends, side by side, you can see how unstable the ping is for the $3 Wi-Fi card and it's not really usable. The $50 one provides a more than playable experience and is fine for gaming in my opinion. Now there is a big difference for the cards, the small $3 Wi-Fi card is only on 2.4GHz with a small antenna and this TP-Link $50 one is on 5GHz. The 5GHz network is a lot faster comparatively to the 2.4GHz one, so this comparison isn't exactly fair. I think what would be more objective is to buy something off AliExpress with similar specs to the TP-Link $50 one and see what's the difference between them. The other difference is the quality. The $3 one's plastic kind of snapped on the side minutes into using it, which is terrible. The $50 TP-Link one felt a little bit more built to last, which I do expect for the price that I paid. So the catch is that the $3 one is pretty much unusable for gaming at least. It could be fine for loading basic pages or general office work, but keep in mind that the latency to the router was awful and would be annoying if you're constantly loading web pages all the time. Of course, this isn't justifying the $50 Wi-Fi card as it is expensive, and I personally had to get it in a rush so I didn't really have any options. If I did have more options, I would have bought something off AliExpress. The other problem with the TP-Link $50 Wi-Fi card is that I have a gigabit internet connection, but I won't be able to fully utilize it. Now, of course, this is just a limitation of using Wi-Fi, but for me, I was perfectly fine with the speed that I got from the internet test as well as the ping to the router. That about sums it up. Check out wisetech.org for some awesome content. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!